Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon tank and I just got done feeding it while I was standing here watching everybody making sure everybody was getting some dinner. Thought I would grab my camera and spend a couple of moments talking about this new plant I got in my tank. So I believe this is called a Panagetan and I got three of them. I put two in this tank, one sort of vanished overnight and in its place I put that red tiger lotus if you can see how the bulb is sort of tucked under the corner of that rock that's where the bulb for the Aponagetan was the other one went underneath the edge of that rock and then it exploded it's only been in the tank a couple of weeks and I've already got all of that happening I'm assuming that's a flower spike I'm not sure. I've never seen this plant before. I'm not familiar with it at all, but I'm assuming that's a flower spike. And it was a tiny little wisp of a green thing when I put it in the tank, so it's just done really well. I knew it was going to be an easy to care for, low light requirement plant. I just replaced the lights in this tank. I had compact fluorescence in one of these reflector domes. They come sold as clamp lights. It's just an aluminum reflector dome. So I removed the compact fluorescent in there and I put in one of the LED bulbs that sort of looks like a frosted white light bulb. It just looks like a standard old school incandescent light bulb. But it's only 11 watts. It's 5000K as is the LED shop light that I just put on this tank fairly recently. And so far, I really like it. And it's doing a really good job at keeping the plants good and healthy. Now, we got a little bit of glare at this end of the tank, so I'll try to get it at this angle. In fact, actually, what I will do is take a couple steps back this way and turn that tank off. So this is the other plant that I have just put in the tank recently. It's some kind of crypt. I can't remember the name of it. I know I've got crypt uh, Wendetti or Wendy or however it's pronounced in my uh, Black Ghost Nightfish tank. And it took a long time to really establish and take off and start growing, but it did. And it looks fantastic now. I've got the same stuff in this tank and it's always just sort of been there. It's never really done anything I've actually once or twice had a few little babies pop up and then fizzle away and fade away I do have the synodontus in this tank that eats plants so that might have something to do with it and I did have the tilapia in this tank for a while and the tilapia did a lot of damage to the plants I used to have this tank planted very differently uh, until that tilapia was in here so I'm actually trying to sort of build it back up now these crypt down here I'm assuming need a fair amount of light most fairly compact plants need a lot of light and most reddish plants need a lot of light and this is both it's a very reddish sort of plant that is very compact now some plants will change color if you give them a lots of light they'll turn nice and red but if they don't get enough light they'll stay sort of green or vice versa if they're not getting enough light they might be red you know it just depends on the plant and the species so this is really greened up since it's gone in the tank I don't know if that's good or bad the roots seem to be growing vigorously enough, and it seems healthy. So it's only been in the tank for about five days now, but it doesn't look like it's suffering any shock, and it certainly doesn't look like it's not getting enough light. I really honestly don't know the light requirements of that plant. I never even bothered to look it up. I always just stick stuff in the tank. If it doesn't live, then, well, that doesn't really work in my tanks. If it does live, then great. So... I'm trying this one even though I suspect it's going to be a little higher uh, light requirement needs and I'm doing that because of these new LEDs I put in here again that's only 11 watts I have one in both ends it's the same little dome light and I know this is going to be way too bright to actually see what it looks like but yeah, you can kind of see it it just looks like a light bulb screwed in there and that is an LED and it's 5000 K so it's not ideal for growing plants but that also depends on what kind of plants you're growing and whether they're flowering plants or whether you're trying to get roots to establish 
and so on and so forth. The light spectrum that the plants use depends on what the plant's doing. And as I mentioned, the reddish plants tend to use different um, parts of the spectrum than the green plants do, and so on and so forth. So I think these 5000K LEDs are going to work out nicely. Generally, when people talk about using 6500K, they're talking about using um, compact fluorescence or fluorescent tubes, and they produce light somewhat differently than LEDs, depending on the LED and how the chip is manufactured. But the long and short of it is you get a really sort of narrow spike of light in the spectrum that the compact or the fluorescent, whether it's compact or it's the T5 high outputs, doesn't really matter. So if you've got a 6500K, you get a big spike in the blue. You get lots of blue light, but you get very little red light. Now, the problem is, is if you try to use a middle of the road uh, fluorescent light, you don't get enough of either. You don't get enough of the red and you don't get enough of the blue. So trying to use like a four or a 5000K fluorescent is tricky. You, you're probably not going to have much luck. So you either need to go with a 2700K or a 3000K for plants that need more of the reddish type light. And then if you're going with just sort of overall in, in generalized terms, a light that would be well... Uh, do well for just overall growth of your plants, you'd want something like a six or a 6,000, 6,500K, um, much more up on that blue end of the spectrum to give it lots of energy. It needs that nice high energy blue light to really grow. So it was always one or the other. With LEDs, it doesn't quite work that way. You can have an LED that's a 5,000K LED, and it might actually have quite a lot of blue in it. I have a LED grow light uh, in my kitchen, and it actually, if you look at the spectral spectrograph or whatever they call it, if you look at its color footprint, so to speak, it's a 3000K light. It looks beautiful, soft, late afternoon sun, but when you actually look at the light that the chips produce, it has a lot more blue in it than you would expect and for being as soft as it is it's got a lot less red in it than you would think so even though it's a 3000k light it does really well as a grow light in my kitchen now again i'm not growing anything in the kitchen that needs a huge amount of light i did just get a bougainvillea which requires six to eight hours of full sun a day so that's my experimental plant uh, I'm going to let this bougainvillea sit under this LED and see how well that does. And that'll be kind of a test to see how good this light really is. So far, this bougainvillea is doing well. It's really compact. It's dense. I got flowers all over it. It looks just amazing. And then, of course, sitting under that beautiful, beautiful uh, light that's being produced by that LED makes it look all the better. So LEDs are not the same as compact fluorescence. So that whole, you've got to use 6500K doesn't apply when you move into LEDs. And then if you get into any kind of LED that's designed for um, you know, planted tanks, you'll see that they have the red and the blue chips added to it to uh, you know, supply additional spectrums of light that the plants you know, tend to use more of. You get sort of a boost in the blue and a boost in the red. It makes the tank look funny. I don't particularly like them. And again, unless you're growing plants that really have high lighting requirements, you simply don't need, um, you know, lights like that. At least I don't for anything I'm growing. And again, I had them on my brackish tank for a little while and it was just sort of obnoxious. So I switched over and I have different type LEDs on my brackish tank now. Uh, and we'll actually talk about that in an upcoming video soon. That was a really simple DIY project. It was low budget, but it's also very low quality in my opinion. And again, we'll get to that uh, at a later date. So anyway, I don't know how I got rambling on talking about uh, lights and tank lighting and everything. All I really wanted to do was show you this plant here has the flower growing on it. But I think it's got that flower and all this incredible growth uh, in part because of the high quality light I'm putting on it from that LED and as anybody that knows me well knows don't get me started talking about LEDs because I never shut up I'm really 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 fascinated by them and I love uh, basically using a computer chip to grow plants I that just fascinates me 
So stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss anything else I got coming up. Uh, I will be talking more about that uh, light I have in my kitchen and the plants I've got going on up there because I got a little project in the back of my mind that I'm thinking about working on here in the near future and it would relate to all of my planted tanks down here in the fish room. So again, if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of this. And then don't forget, of course, this one here is my 125 gallon tank. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you real soon on the next one.